Are you ready to train your brain with yeah. the help of these tricky brain teasers? Then let's get started. Look at these ladies and try to figure out who's not very smart. Even though the first woman looks as if she's about to touch a hot iron, the device is actually unplugged, so she won't hurt herself. The second lady, though, is about to touch a heated waffle maker. Oh no! John's parachute hasn't opened, and he's now plunging toward the ground. Does he have higher chances of survival if he falls into a lake or on a haystack? He should try to fall on a haystack. Do you see crocodiles hiding near the shore of the lake? Uh -oh. What do you think is more dangerous in this situation? A bear or a swarm of bees? Look, the bear is about to run after its prey. It won't pay any attention to you. But bees seem to be angry. They'll most likely go after you. Look at these people. Who's most likely to survive? The man hanging over the fire? A woman tied over a barrel filled with toxic liquid? Or this guy swinging over a field of sharp needles? The woman hanging over the barrel with toxic liquid is the one who will survive. Look. There's a hole in the barrel, and the liquid is leaking out of it. The woman just needs to wait until the barrel is empty and untie herself. To get out of the locked room, Jeremy had to crack this puzzle. 1 equals 5, 2 equals 15, 3 equals 215, 4 equals 3215, 4 equals 3215, 5 equals… What number is hidden under the question mark? It's 1, 5 equals 1, because 1 equals 5. But the door of the room still didn't open. Apparently, Jeremy had to solve another riddle. He had to arrange four nines in such a way that they were equal to 100. He could use any math symbols. How can the guy do it? Jeremy figured out the correct answer pretty fast. 99 plus 9 divided by 9 equals 100. You're crossing a railroad bridge when you spot a train coming toward you. The bridge is built over a lake swarming with crocodiles, so jumping into the water is out of the question. How can you survive in this situation? You're farther away from the shore you came from and won't have enough time to get back to that side. So your only option is to run toward the train really fast and turn left or right when you cross the bridge. Jack is taking part in a challenge. He's reached the final stage, which takes place in a desert. If he succeeds now, he'll win one million dollars. There are four pots in front of him. In each of them, there's a key. Jack needs to get any key from any pot. but. On top of the first pot, there's a bowl filled with a strong acid. The second pot is covered with a bowl full of venomous spiders. In the bowl placed on the third pot, Jack sees a raging fire. A viper is curled up in the bowl covering the fourth pot. Uh -oh. Jack isn't allowed to drop the bowls or turn them over. Which pot should he choose? The guy should choose the third bowl. He can put the fire out with sand. He's in the desert after all. And get the key. David's company develops apps for smartphones. Right now, he's looking for a designer. He's got hundreds of resumes, but he's chosen just three of them. Angela's resume says, I'm 23 years old. I don't have a lot of experience, but I'm a fast learner and have already designed similar applications. Helen wrote in her resume, 
I'm 26 and have four years of work experience. You should hire me because I've created lots of TikTok stories that have gone viral. And Eric's resume claims he's 28 years old with seven years of work experience. He's designed tons of apps and he's been working for Google since the company was launched. David can only hire one person, but it's okay because one applicant hasn't lied in their resume. Who is it? Eric has just seven years of work experience, but Google was officially launched in 1998. There are no stories on TikTok, meaning Helen couldn't create them. David hired Angela, even though she hasn't been working for a long time. She's honest and has a nice portfolio. Rich businessman brought very important documents to his office, but he had a meeting and needed to leave for several hours. Austin asked his secretary to be on the lookout for anything suspicious. His competitors could try to break into his office to look at the documents. When he came back, his secretary told Austin everything had been quiet. But when the man looked around, he realized someone had been inside his office. The secretary eventually admitted having fallen asleep while Austin was away. How did the businessman understand someone had visited his office? The globe on his desk is now turned in the opposite direction. William, a successful businessman, was having dinner at an expensive restaurant. At one point, he went outside to make an important call. When he returned, his case with money and documents was gone. The thief could only be another customer. When the police arrived, they questioned everyone who was in the restaurant. Karen said she had been writing a new chapter of her book. Paul said he had been waiting in a line to get to the bathroom. Donna had already paid for her coffee and was putting on her coat. And Robert was having a video call with his girlfriend. It didn't take detectives long to figure out who the thief was. Do you know it? The criminal is Paul. Besides him, there were only four other visitors at the restaurant, and they were all busy. How could there be any line for the bathroom? The police got informed that one of the most wanted criminals, Carl Walker, was going to arrive in the country. According to this information, the man was going to come by plane. Unfortunately, the police knew very little about him. He was short, wearing glasses, and traveling under a false name. Detective Adams went to the airport. He detained four people who fit the description. They were Mr. Lewis, Mr. Relkaw, Mr. Taylor, and Mr. Wilson. Look at these men carefully and try to figure out who the criminal is. It's Mr. Relkaw. His last name is actually the criminal's last name, Walker, but with its letters reversed. A detective is looking for an important witness. Without them, she won't be able to solve a complicated case. The only thing she knows is that the witness is left-handed. Look at these people and help the detective choose the person she needs. It's the waitress. She's holding the tray with her right hand and serving people with her left dominant hand. Look at these princesses and try to figure out which of them is the fake one. It's the princess on the right. The tiaras of the princess on the left and the one in the middle have a reflective shine to them. You can see they are made of precious metals. But the ice princess's tiara doesn't shine. It's made of plastic. A businessman arrived at his office after a long trip. He discovered that some important documents had disappeared from his desk. He immediately called the police and a detective arrived shortly after. After interviewing all the workers, he had a list with three suspects on it. They were Emma, the accountant, Sophia, the receptionist, and James, the sales manager. But all of these people claimed they hadn't been inside the businessman's office. It didn't take the detective long to figure out who was lying. Do you have any ideas? The thief is James. Both women wear high heels in the office, but
but the footprints on the floor are obviously left by a pair of sneakers. An elderly lady called the police. She told them someone had sneaked into her house while she had been asleep. The intruder took away the money she kept hidden in her kitchen cupboard. The woman was sure it was one of her neighbors. The police visited all the neighbors, but each of them claimed they had spent the entire day at home. Look at their houses and try to figure out who the thief is. Rick is lying. He wasn't at home. His car was parked near the house already after the snow had built up on the driveway. Look at these people carefully. Who does this dog belong to? The dog's owner is the guy in the middle. He's the only one who isn't trying to pet the animal. Can you figure out how many watermelons there are in this picture? Five. Gloria failed her math test. Luckily, her professor was an understanding woman. She offered a deal. If the girl cracked three riddles, she'd get a good mark. Of course, Gloria agreed. The first task was to figure out the answer to the equation. Can you do the same? The answer is 232. Gloria didn't need much time to solve it and got the next puzzle. The student saw several numbers made up of matches. What should be the last number? The last number should be 1. After every step, the number of joints goes down by 1. And finally, the teacher gave Gloria several pool balls. Use only 3 of them to make this equation true. After a couple of minutes, Gloria figured out the way to do it. Do you know what she did? The girl rotated 9 and got 6. After that, she took the balls with numbers 13, 11, and 6 and got 30. Gloria's quick wit helped her, and she passed the test. You're trapped in a room with no doors or windows. All of a sudden, the room starts filling with water. You check everywhere, but can't find any way to turn it off. You know that help is on the way, but it's still at least 5 minutes until their arrival. You only have 2 minutes. After that, the entire room will be flooded. Obviously, you can't hold your breath for 3 minutes. You've got 3 objects, but only one of them can save your life. What should you choose? A straw, a rope, or an empty bucket? You should opt for the bucket. Put it on your head. This will create an air pocket, and you'll be able to breathe for a couple of minutes until help arrives. A unique diamond was exhibited in a famous museum. It was guarded at all times, and only small groups of 10 people were allowed to enter the room. After one of such groups had left, an alarm went off. The guards ran into the room and found there a young man. They searched him. There were just several bills, a lighter, a bottle with soda, a camera, and a cell phone in his bag. The guards had to let the man go. But the next morning, it was announced that the diamond had been stolen. How did it happen? The man replaced the real diamond with a fake one and hid the real treasure in his bottle with soda. Mr. Raymond Lopez, a rich businessman, urgently needed his assistant. But the guy was on vacation in the countryside. It was Wednesday when Mr. Lopez sent him a letter asking the man to come to the city as soon as he could. Now it's already Sunday and no assistant in sight. Raymond decided to go and check on the guy. When he arrived, he found out that his assistant was okay and packing his stuff. Oh, Mr. Lopez, I received your letter just yesterday. I was going to leave in a half an hour, he exclaimed. You're fired. I don't need people I can't trust. You just wanted to have a longer vacation, that's all. Why did Mr. Lopez think so? The 
The calendar on the assistant's table shows that it's Monday, November 4th. But there's no mail delivery on Sundays. The guy is lying. Someone robbed a bank in a large city. A police detective went to visit the main suspect. I've been feeling unwell all this week, and I haven't left my apartment for three days. I didn't even need food. My fridge is full. You can make sure yourself, the suspect said, and indeed opened his fridge. But the detective realized the man was lying and arrested him. How did he figure it out? First of all, the bread on the table looks fresh. Plus, if the man had been staying inside for three days already, his fridge wouldn't be that full. An art expert paid big money at an auction for a painting that didn't cost anything. He knew about this fact. He was also an honest man and didn't have any criminal intentions. Why did he buy this picture? Although the painting cost nothing, its frame was a beautiful and expensive piece of art. After several crimes had been committed in the city, the police decided to visit the main suspect. He lived in the countryside. When the officers entered the house, they found no one inside. They searched the entire place, including the attic, which was in a mess. Then they decided to wait for the house owner to come home. One of the police officers went to buy some water. When he came back, he told the rest of his colleagues there was no need to wait anymore. Why? The attic window was closed when the police first arrived. But now it's open. The criminal was hiding in the attic and escaped through the window. Two people are standing near the river. Both of them want to get to the opposite side. But the boat can only hold one of them. And still, they manage to get across the river. How? They were on the opposite banks. Detective Adams came to the park to have lunch outside in the sun. But his attention was drawn by three men running around a fountain. Each of them was shouting, Thief! Catch the thief! The detective was confused. Who was the real thief? That's why he just kept watching. After some time, the distance between the men shortened. Detective Adams immediately realized who the real thief was. Can you figure it out too? If the third man was the thief, the second one would only have to turn around to catch him. The same goes for the second man, which means the man running the first is the criminal. How can you put a whole apple into a glass bottle without cutting the fruit or breaking the glass? Put the bottle over an apple tree branch in the spring, then wait until an apple grows inside. Scott, an infamous burglar, came home one evening. Just a day before, he had stolen some very expensive paintings from Mr. Smith's house. He was in the living room when he noticed several police officers approaching his home. Scott gave instructions to his wife and slipped out through the back door. When the officer knocked on the door, Scott's wife told him, My husband has been away for a week already. He's actually supposed to come home today. At this moment, Scott entered the house. He hugged his wife as if they hadn't seen each other for ages. But the police officers didn't believe them. Why? Look at the dog. If its owner had been away for a week, the pooch would be jumping around, happy and excited. But the animal saw Scott just a couple of minutes ago and isn't showing too much enthusiasm. Emery was on the expedition and finally found an old cave where pirates used to leave their treasures. However, there are four chests, but only one had the gold. If Emery touches the wrong one, she'll get locked in the cave forever. The first chest said, the treasure is in chest 2 or chest 4. The second one said, it's in chest 1 or chest 3. The third chest says, it's in here. The fourth one said, it's not in here. However, only one of these statements was true. So which chest should Emery pick? (laughs) 
If the treasure is in the first chest, statements 2 and 4 are correct. However, there should only be one correct one. If it's in the second chest, the first one and the fourth one are true. If it's in the third chest, then two statements are true, the second and third. So Emery should pick the fourth chest. This way, only the first statement is correct and the treasure is in the fourth one. Detective Callum was in a bank and heard two women arguing. Mrs. Lewis and Mrs. Clark were both claiming that a handbag was theirs. Luckily, one young man took a picture of the waiting room just before the argument. So take a look and tell who the handbag belongs to. The handbag stands right between the women. However, Mrs. Lewis has a cast, and the bag stands next to her broken arm. If it was her handbag, she would put it on the other side of her. So the bag must belong to Mrs. Clark. Nick and Collins were traveling by train, and they were leaving at the same station. Collins stood up first and got his bag. But when Nick got his bag, he opened it and realized it wasn't his. So he accused Collins of trying to steal his bag. However, Collins says it was just an accident, because the bags looked exactly the same. Still, Nick didn't believe it was an accident. Take a look inside their bags and try to guess why. Collins' bag is only filled with a couple of plush toys, while Nick's bag had electronics and many books. Collins couldn't take Nick's bag by accident, because even though they're similar, their weight is too different, and he'd noticed that. In the morning, Mrs. Miller was wrapping Christmas presents for her family. She left to take a shower when she was done, but the gifts were gone when she returned. She went downstairs and asked her family who took the presents, but everyone denied taking them. Her husband said that he was watching TV the whole morning and didn't even get up. Her daughter, Amanda, said that she forgot about the laundry hanging outside last night, so she was out picking it up. Her other daughter, Jane, said that she was in the kitchen eating. Can you tell who lied? It was Amanda. Her laundry is perfectly folded and dry. But it's cold outside, and the laundry would be all frozen if she just picked it up. Mason was arrested for robbing a bank. The police knew that his girlfriend helped him and wanted to arrest her, too. They had four suspects. One of them was the girlfriend who was lying. Another was his sister, who didn't rob the bank, but was also lying because she wanted to help. The other two girls were innocent and were telling the truth. So who is Mason's girlfriend? Selena says Amelia is his girlfriend. Felicia says Penelope is lying. Penelope says Selena is lying. Amelia says Felicia is not his sister. If Selena is telling the truth, Amelia is lying. Then Felicia is his sister who's lying. Therefore, Penelope is telling the truth. It contradicts that Selena is telling the truth. So, Selena is lying. Then, Penelope is telling the truth, and Felicia is lying. So, Amelia must be the other girl telling the truth. Two liars are Selena and Felicia. They are Mason's girlfriend and sister. Since Amelia says Felicia isn't his sister, then Selena is his sister, and Felicia is his girlfriend. Archer was watching TV when he got a call. Detective Callum said that his friend, George, was poisoned and asked to come. Archer arrived as soon as he could and was immediately arrested for poisoning his friend. Why? The detective didn't say where exactly to come. Maybe coming to his friend's house could be logical, but they are in some park. How would Archer know where to come if he didn't know what happened? A postman called Detective Callum and said someone needed help and gave the address. The detective arrived and found Mr. Hanks tied to a chair. Mr. Hanks said that he had been sitting there for several hours. Someone broke into his house at night, tied him up, and stole all of his money. His wife was outside the city. When the postman brought the mail in the morning, he asked for help. 
However, Detective Callum didn't believe the man and said that he staged it. Why didn't he believe Mr. Hanks? The letters the postman just brought don't lie on the floor by the door. Instead, they're on the shelf, where only someone who is inside the house could put it. If Mr. Hanks sat there tied up all night and was alone, it'd stay on the floor. Mr. Carter, a rich man who collected antiques, asked Detective Morris to visit him. When the detective arrived, the collector said, I've just got a precious statuette, but I need to go away on business for a week, and I'm afraid someone will break into my house. My neighbors are so suspicious. Of course, the statuette is insured, but still… Detective Morris had some other urgent things to do. He promised to come back in the evening to figure out how to deal with the situation. But when he arrived several hours later, Mr. Carter rushed to him. I was away for an hour, no more. I drove my sister to the doctor, but when I came back, the statuette was gone. Detective Morris didn't believe the collector. Why? When he left the house in the afternoon, he noticed an apple lying in front of the left part of the gate. It's still there. But for a car to drive through, both parts of the gate have to be open. This means that Mr. Carter lied about leaving his home by car. A man with a bandage around his head came to a police station. I was hitchhiking when the car stopped. The driver asked me to check if one of the tires was flat. I bent over to look, and he hit me on the head. When I came to my senses, I found out he had taken all my money and cell phone. I remember he had a big car, large eyebrows, and a mustache. The police had a suspect. They found him in a cafe. But the man said it couldn't be him. He changed the tires on his car two weeks ago, and since then, the car had been parked near the cafe. The detective realized the man was lying right away. How? There's a no parking sign near the cafe. No car could be staying there for two weeks. Mr. and Mrs. Williams had to go on a business trip. It was a sudden and urgent matter. They didn't have time to take the money they had to the bank. That's why they decided to hide it under the doormat. When they returned, the money was gone. Three people visited the apartment while the owners were away. The Williams' neighbor, he helped them fix the TV. A housekeeper came to clean the apartment and an electrician visited to deal with some lighting problems. Who took the money? It was the housekeeper. She was the only person who had any reason to look under the doormat. Laura took part in an experiment. She was locked in a room and had to crack a riddle to get out of it. On the table, she found a note with the numbers 11, 69, 96, and 88. The girl needed to figure out what they had in common. Can you do the same? All these numbers can be read in the same way if you position them upside down. A man on a motorbike crashed Mr. Ruby's store window grabbed a dozen expensive watches, and drove away. When the police arrived, Mr. Ruby told them he was almost sure it had been his nephew, Patrick. The officers went to visit the guy. Because of a heavy downpour, they got there in only an hour. Patrick was at home, together with his friend. Look at the weather! I haven't been outside since yesterday! Patrick's friend confirmed his words. But the police didn't believe this story and arrested Patrick. Why? The guy's helmet is hanging on his motorbike. If it had been there since the previous day, it would be filled with rainwater now. Look at these two girls and their fridges. One of them has never had enough money until recently. A month ago, she won the lottery. Which girl is that? It's the girl on the left. 
High heels, a flashy dress, and a fridge filled to the brim. She looks like a person who has finally managed to get their hands on big money. Look at these people lounging near a swimming pool. They all seem to be wealthy, but in fact, only one of them is a millionaire. The girl sitting under the palm tree is wearing a lot of gold jewelry. But all this gold is fake. It leaves greenish marks on her body. The girl walking past the swimming pool is wearing sandals with a large logo on them. But the name of this brand is written wrong, so it's fake. The guy who's lying on the floating mattress is playing a game on his phone. But instead of an apple, there's a strawberry on his gadget. The man who's watering the plants is the millionaire we're looking for. There's a Mercedes keychain hanging out of his pocket. He also left a $100 tip for the waiter. This girl, Susanna, can't remember who her husband is too. Can you help her? It must be this guy. Look, he's wearing a ring while the other doesn't seem to be married. Ava's parents, John and Catherine, came to the hospital to pick up the teenager. Can you tell which of these young people is their child? It's this girl. John and Catherine are Ava's parents. Ava is a girl's name, and she's the only girl in the room. Esme was having her usual walk in the forest. By nighttime, she realized she had gotten lost again. She was wandering around until she came across the witch's house. The girl petted the cat, (laughs) greeted the witch, and asked the woman to send her home. At that time, the witch was participating in a math tournament for witches from all over the world. She really wanted to win and to prove she was the smartest witch out there. There was one last task she couldn't solve. The witch promised that if Esme helped her, she'd let her go home. If not, Esme would have to stay with the witch forever. Here's the task. Make three identical squares by moving only three matches. You just have to move these three matches over there. It works, and Esme can return home. Thor asked his friends to guess what his laptop's three-digit password was. Each of them made a guess. The numbers they chose were 357-902-907-954. Even though no one's guess was right, every person guessed one digit correctly and exactly in its right place. Can you figure out Thor's passcode? Since just one of them guessed one digit correctly, the first digit can't be 9. In this case, three people would have guessed it right, and there wouldn't be enough people to guess the third digit. The only other option for the first digit is 3, which means the second digit can't be 5 and the third one can't be 7. Since the second one can't be 5, then it's 0. Two people guessed it correctly. And the third digit is 4. If it was 2, it would mean someone guessed two digits correctly, 0 and 2. But that's not true. So Thor's code is 304. Students were divided into two teams to do one task. Storm, Dean, and Brooke were in Team Yellow. Elsie, Emma, and Veda were in Team Purple. Following the same logic, what group does Lexi belong to? In Team Yellow, there are students whose names have just one syllable. In Team Purple, there are students with the names that consist of two syllables. Lexi's names has two syllables, so she belongs to Team Purple. Atlas got trapped in the attic of an old house. There are just three ways out, and all of them dangerous. Behind the first door, the roof and the floor are made out of magnifying glass, and the sun will burn anyone who comes in. Behind the second door, there's a room filled with poisonous gas, and the third door is hiding a hungry lion. How can Atlas escape? He should wait until it's night. The sun will set, and the guy will safely walk through the first door.
Now, take a look at Iris and her close friends, Max, Jenny, Josh, and Ren. Who's her partner? It must be Josh. Look, they have matching tattoos. On a rainy night, Dylan was driving past a bus stop. There were three people there, an elderly lady who was feeling unwell, a doctor who saved many lives, and Selena, a girl Dylan had been crushing on for years. Unfortunately, there was only room for one more person in the car. What should Dylan do? He should give his car to the doctor, who would take the elderly lady and driver to the hospital. And Dylan can stay at the bus stop with the girl of his dreams. Charlie, Andy, Taylor, and Alex are all related to each other. But one of them is the opposite gender from the other three. Here's what you know. Alex is either Charlie's brother or Charlie's only daughter. Alex's sister is either Andy or Taylor. Taylor's only son is either Charlie or Andy. Can you tell who's the opposite gender from the other three? If Alex is Charlie's only daughter, then Alex cannot have a sister. It means that Alex is Charlie's brother. If Alex's sister is Andy, then Andy's a girl. And according to fact 3, Charlie is Taylor's only son. But Alex is Charlie's brother. So we have a contradiction here. It means that Alex's sister is Taylor. So Taylor's a girl. Charlie, Alex, and Taylor are siblings. And Andy is Taylor's son. Keenan was watching TV when a detective arrived with a search warrant. The detective said that the city bank had been robbed, and Keenan was the main suspect. The man replied that he hadn't even left the house that day. He couldn't do anything. The police didn't find the money, but still arrested the man. Why? Keenan said he hadn't left the house. But take a look at the calendar and the grocery store receipt. The dates are the same. It means Keenan at least did some grocery shopping and lied about not leaving the house. Janet called the police. I was crossing the road when a car almost ran me down. I fell down and hit my head. When the police officers arrived at the place of the accident, Janet showed them the car that, as she thought, had almost hit her. The driver arrived at that moment. He denied doing it. Detective Anderson asked Janet to calm down. It really wasn't the car they needed to look for. How did he understand it? It was raining when Janet was crossing the road. But there's a dry spot under the man's car. It means it had been standing there for a long time and couldn't have hit Janet. Look at these two bloggers. As you can see, they both seem to be very popular. They also have the same amount of likes. But there's something wrong with one of them. She must be hiding something. What is it? The girl on the right is probably trying to save money at the moment. The logo on her bag looks like the Chanel logo, but it's written Gucci underneath. Detective Anderson was on a train. He had very nice fellow travelers. They were talking and laughing when the train entered a tunnel. Everything was plunged into darkness for several minutes. When the train left the tunnel, one of the passengers, Ella, exclaimed, My diamond brooch! It's gone! Everyone started talking nervously, looking at one another. That's when Anderson calmly said, I know who took the brooch. I saw it. How could he see it? One of the travelers had a watch with luminous hands. And when this guy moved his hand to take the brooch, James noticed it. It was a scorching hot day when Larry made a bet with his friends. The guy told them that water produced by different companies tastes different too. At that time, they were chilling in the garden of one of Larry's friends, drinking water and lemonade. You can blindfold me. I'll take a sip from two bottles of water, the one we have on the table and the one you'll bring from the kitchen. I noticed it was another producer. 
I bet I'll be able to tell the difference. Then he did exactly that. His friends were ready to give Larry the money he had won, but Detective Anderson, yep, he was there too, cut in. You were cheating, he said. Why did he think so? It was an extremely hot day. No wonder the water that had been outside for several hours was much warmer than the water brought from the kitchen. Rachel called the police early in the morning. When they arrived, she told the officers her story. I work in a museum. Yesterday, I took home several ancient books. I wanted to do some research. But then a blackout happened. I lit a couple of candles and continued my work. Suddenly, I heard the doorbell ring. When I opened the door, someone in a black mask hit me on the head. When I came to my senses, the books were gone. Detective Anderson arrested the woman for misreporting. Why? If there had been a blackout, the doorbell wouldn't have been working. Detective Anderson was walking along the river when he heard someone screaming. It was a young woman. She was drowning. James immediately left his shoes and backpack on the ground and dove into the water. Luckily, he was in time. When James was pulling the woman out of the river, he saw a passerby standing next to his stuff. "Uh, Unfortunately, I can't swim, but I looked after your things, the man said. Then why did you rummage in my backpack? James asked. How did he understand someone had opened his backpack? When he dropped the bag on the ground, the zipper was on the left side, but now it's on the right. Detective Anderson found out a smuggler was going to leave the country through the largest airport in the city. He arrived there and detained three suspects. Look at them and try to figure out who the smuggler is. It's the third passenger. His suitcase is full of totally random stuff. Women's shoes, some rugs, old dirty jeans, a wig. Plus, when closed, the suitcase looks much larger than when it's open. Detective Anderson's friend, Jose, hurt his knee while playing frisbee. The doctor let the guy stay at home, but by no means was he allowed to get up from his bed. Anderson was also there, and he promised the doctor to look after his friend. But at some point, he had to go away for several hours. He asked his sister Sarah to take care of Jose. When James returned, Sarah told him Jose had followed the instructions and had been sleeping for the whole day. But when Anderson entered his friend's room, he immediately realized the man had gotten up. How did he understand this? Jose moved his bedside lamp from the desk to his nightstand and plugged it in. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.